Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. Mighty God, in this great atmosphere, mighty God, doing what the words say, believe in the word. Mighty God, I now introduce to you the Holy Ghost. Mighty God, I introduce to you the Holy Ghost. And Elder Devon Edwards, we live in the word of God. The anointed one of God. The one anointed with John the Baptist. Mighty God, anointing to prepare he the rapture of the Lord. Prepare he the way of the Lord. Receive him in Jesus' name. Amen. For my mother, I must be saved. For my mother, I must be saved. And whatever you have to do with me, Oh, let me be lost for eternity. For above all, I must be saved. For above all, I must be saved. For above all, I must be saved. And whatever you have to do, don't let me be lost for eternity. For above all, I must be saved one last time or above all else. I must be saved Ooh, or above all else. I must for whatever you have to do with me, don't let me be lost for eternity. For above all else, I must be saved. For above all else, I must be saved. For above all else, I must be saved. After I have preached others, after I have prayed the prayers, after I have given. After I've spent time in this presence, Lord, let me not lose my place in you. But what would it profit me for all these hours and all these years spent sacrificing for the kingdom of God and to allow a moment of pleasure, a moment of test, a moment of trial, Cause me to lose my way. For above all else, brother, we must be saved. If we can't preach, let us be saved. If we can't sing, let us be saved. If we can't hold a mic, let us be saved. Above all else, I must be saved. Are you saved today? It's a beautiful day. To say yes to Jesus. 
It's a beautiful day to make a commitment to the Lord, the Christ, the keeper of your life, the one who has your breath in his hands. It's a beautiful day to surrender to Jesus. But what is there to gain outside of Jesus? When all the calamities that we've been talking about, all this great desolation, if you're not in the rapture, you're going to be in a sad position. But you have a chance today to make your calling and your election sure. You have a chance today to turn around backslider, to turn around, turn around, to turn around, turn around, to give God another chance, or to allow God to give you another chance. Or above all else, I feel like there is a strong call on this ministry for the children of the listeners to be saved. Take them to church and baptize them in Jesus. Take them to church as small as they desire to be saved and baptize them. There is a great, great, great attack on the children of the saints. And we have to make sure we sure of the foundation by putting them under the blood of Jesus. Moses' mother could have kept him only until he reached a certain age. But there comes a time when she had to trust him in the hands of God. And she put him in a basket. She put him on a dangerous river, just in an ark. For the ark is a place, the ark is a covenant place of protection, of glory, of victory. And she placed him in an ark in an adverse situation among people, water, wild animal. But God preserved, God preserved Moses in those situations. So get your child baptized in the name of Jesus. Put the name of Jesus on them. When the name of Jesus is called, the blood is applied. When the blood is applied, the seal of God is placed on them. And so we want you to make sure that the mark of God is on them, that when the enemy comes, he sees the mark and knows that he has to consult with God before he can touch that word. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody open your mouth and say, Hallelujah. It's a decision. It's a decision time. It's a decision time. Somebody to take all their children. It's decision time for you to take your children and get them buried in the name of Jesus. Get them baptized. From the Stoddard said it clearly that the Muslim kid is born a Muslim. The Rasta man kid is born a Rasta. Not up in here, oh, like but the children of God allow their children to become what they like want to become. Like Hallelujah! But they must take the name of Jesus. They must be the children of God, the son of God. Hallelujah! That is when you made that decision. So put them in the hands of God. Don't worry about it. What's going to happen on the weekday? Give them to God now and let them be God's business. That God has that. Don't let them be called children of the devil. But let them be called children of God. Hallelujah. Greetings to everyone. I don't know where that came from, but I'm sure it's a somebody. Hallelujah. And we're listening for the reports to come. Hallelujah. That hundreds of children were baptized on Sunday. Hallelujah. God, the prophet said, listen what God says, obey God's word, obey God's word, obey what God is saying to you this morning, don't make it be too late, hallelujah, if somebody's is going to be too late, 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 too late. Come. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not all of us will be caught up in the rapture, and all of us will remain about the tribulation time. Hallelujah, because we have an appointment. We have an appointment. Hallelujah. Everybody keep their appointment. It's okay if you keep your appointment. The Bible said it's appointed unto us once to die. And when you die, there is no recourse. 
wherever that tree falls, there shall it lie until the day of judgment. And if you die outside of Christ, Maya can be a sire, can be a change. If you die outside of Christ, you have a Christless eternity. Hallelujah. But if you're, if you're in Christ, if you're in Christ, how do I get into Christ? As many as have been baptized into Christ, put on Christ. If I want to get into my shirt, I put it on. And when I put it on, I am I'm in it. If you want to get in Christ, put on Christ. Bear it with him by baptism unto death. That life as Christ was raised up by the glory of a Father, even so you rise to walk in newness of life. Thank God for this morning. Amen. We had such a powerful session last night in church as the anointed vessel was led by God and took us to places. Hallelujah. Hey, la Messiah. Because the new places in the spirit, glory to God. Hallelujah. She made such a profound point that stood in my mind all night. She said some of us have the presence of God, but we don't know the glory. We have the presence, but we don't know the glory. Some people are saved, but they're not sanctified. They're not sanctified. They're not sanctified. They're saved, but they're not sanctified. They have not allowed the spirit to carry them through the process of sanctification, set apart for God's use. Hallelujah. But let me get to the lesson. That's what I'm here for this morning. Hallelujah. Let me not sidetrack. Ella, Ella, Ella Russell, you there? You there? You there? You there? Praise you there, Lord. Ella Russell? Amen. Praise so God. last time we met, um, Ella Russell was looking on. Um, take us up to the Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon. And Armageddon is now a common word in the in the language of politicians. Um, you hear them talk about Armageddon as if it's um, as if it is rice and pea because they understand the reality of this war that will be fought in the Valley of Megiddo. Amen. And as we look at it, there were several the Valley of Jehoshaphat, several names that was given to this particular area in which this war was waged. So let's just speak up where we stop and then jump to where we want to go. So go with me to Revelation chapter 19. And we pick up Elder at verse 20. And the beast was taken. Greetings to everyone. If I didn't do it, I'm very poor on that, but forgive me. I no disrespect that. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worship his image. These both were cast alive, say alive. They were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Verse 21 of Revelation chapter 19. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls of the year. My God, they are the all fat fowls, all fat vultures, because there, there will be so much dead meat for them to be eaten. Amen. It will take years, years for the final burying of these dead. And the fowls of the ear would have a feast on their flesh. And, uh, and so that, that kind of climax where Christ come back to back like the um, Armageddon fight where he's going to fight against those nations that come up to fight against Israel. You'll recall then that the Antichrist will set up his kingdom and 
will set himself in the temple of God and demand to be worshipped at God. And that is where the real fight will begin because the rebellion against his rule will come when he asks the Jews to worship an idol, him being the idol. And, 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 and so once that came out, the red flag went up and they decided to rebel. There are some things, brethren, that should be natural red flag for us as Christians. I don't know if you have every, every flag is rainbow color these days, but there are some flags that should go. There's some alert. If you have the Holy Ghost and, and something comes that is not right, the Holy Ghost normally gives you an alert. It's all a nudge of the Holy Ghost. You can, you can avoid that nudge and go ahead and do what you want. But God always give you that nudge before. Now, if you're finding out, however, that you don't feel that nudge when you're going to do something wrong, then you're in a bad place. You need to get it right with God. You, your conscience about the describing has been smeared as with a hot iron. I don't know if any of you um, press or iron clothes, but if the iron is too hot for the material, then the material crystallizes. So if you put a hot iron on plastic or you put it on polyester or those type of material, it will literally melt it. And some people's conscience, and once that is melted or crystallized, has no more use. And some people's conscience has been lost the sensitivity to what God is saying. But lift your hand and say, God, give me sensitivity to your spirit. Oh, Lama Sander, I feel an anointing on the slide this morning. Lift your hands, and then I feel an anointing on the slide. And say, God, give me sensitivity. Don't let me lose sensitivity to what you're saying. Don't let me lose sensitivity to what you're, how you're moving. Don't let me lose out of this, God. Give me sensitivity to your spirit. Can I hear somebody say, give me sensitivity to your spirit? I'm still in Jamaica, um, enjoying the heat of to God. But thank God I'm still able to be on the line. So we're now in Revelation chapter 20. An ultimate day in this study that we have been doing. Leaving tomorrow for questions. And we're in Revelation chapter 20. And I saw an angel, read from Ella, come down from heaven, having the keys of the bottomless pit. Read from Ella. And a great shame in his hand. And he lay all on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. We're going to be seeing that thousand years at least five more times in this passage which tells us that there is something very important to be noted about this thousand years. So what are we looking at as we approach these verses? We're looking at the end of the Battle of Armageddon, and we're looking at the ushering in of what we call the millennial reign of Christ, or the millennial kingdom, where we believe that God will rule the world from his seat, his seat in the temple in Jerusalem. It will be 1,000 years. But one of the critical prerequisites of this state of 1,000 year peace and reign of Christ is first, we see where the beast and the Antichrist are bound and cast into the lake of fire. And here we see somebody is bound 
and is put there also it says that he, the angel which have the control over those angels that are reserved in shame and the judgment that same angel came with a great shame and all the dragon that all serpent which is the devil and Satan bound him bound him bound him hallelujah there's going to be a day when the devil will finally be bounded with. There's going to be a day when the power of God will enable an angel to bound Satan. The Antichrist has already been bound. The false prophet that accompanies the Antichrist is already been bound. And now we have Satan himself, the archangel, being bound, and his bound is restricted in time for it is a thousand years it is a millennium one thousand years and as he is reserved in this chain whether it is a physical chain or chains of circumstances or chains that god decide restrictive chains he is bound for a thousand years. Not only is he bowed, but the Bible says in verse 3 of Revelation chapter 20, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nation no more till the thousand years be fulfilled. And to our great regret, after that, he will be loose for a little season. So the, the, the devil is bound here in this period. The Antichrist is bound in this period. And the devil, whose main tool is deception. Amen? The main tool of the devil is deception. And the critical thing about deception is that when you are deceived or in deception, you don't know that you are being deceived. And that is what he used. He said to Eve, you shall not surely die. Amen. You shall not surely die, but you shall be as God. And right there, Eve, the Bible said, Adam was not deceived, but Eve being deceived at the food. And once she ate the food, and usher us in to death because there is spiritual death, there is physical death, and then there is the second death. All three were added to her when she disobeyed God. She didn't die physically right away, but she did after a while. But she died spiritually. The moment she obeyed the dragon, the deceiver. And so that's why the Bible said, let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you, especially with vain words. Ladies are easily led away with vain words. How can a man tell you that he has this and you run up him without even doing a check? The serious time. Even in the church, um, Prophetess, when these men come to propose, you have to run a check on them. You have to run a hell check. You have to run a hell check. Find out if they were men, women, or children before you make a decision. Hey, go and find out. Find out if they have a good credit score or how much people they owe. Oh, my God, what, that, what love got to do with it? Yeah, that's love. That's love, brother. Make sure you don't go into anything blind. When you go into that, that relationship with love, make sure you have done all the background checks to ensure that you can face the consequences of your decision. And if God says it, go ahead. If God said it, that settles it, and I believe it. But this dragon, this deceiver that deceived the nations, that deceived those that were in 
after the rapture. And, and those that are in the church that are being deceived, every day there's a new philosophy. And the worst part about it, pastors, is that our young people are in such a deep, deceived, being deeply deceived, and they don't even know. They will do the most absurd thing and tell you, there's nothing wrong with it. We don't see anything wrong with it. Our generation don't have a problem with it. But if the Bible have a problem with it, I have a problem. I don't care what generation you're in, generation X, Y, Q, or Z. I don't care what generation you're in. If the Bible says it's wrong, it is wrong. And that's where it stopped for me. It stopped where the word of God says it. So Satan will be bowed and placed in that place where it was designed for him and his angel. This bottomless pit. Bottomless in the sense that nobody can determine how its length or its width or its depth. And so the enemy is looking company when he tries to deceive you, to tell you to leave your church, tell you to leave your family, tell you to leave your wife, tell you to leave your husband, tell you to walk out, tell you to take your own life. The devil is a liar. Don't let the devil deceive you. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you are able to ask or think or imagine. So the deceiver is of the nations is bound. He is in a pit. He is with the beast and the false prophet. And, 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 and a lot of those great singers uh, will be there. So they'll be having a, a party in hell where they will be in torment day and night. When I throw this in, there is a pull in the realm of the music, brethren. The musicians in our church are under threat. Because not only is that the church don't give them some level of support, but the world is offering them such an attractive package that our young musicians, who are trained on the organs and trained on the bass, the, the consecrated um, instruments in the church are now playing in all kind of devil's band. But the prince of the power of the year, God's archangel and chief musician, Satan, deceiving the nations deceiving our young men and women who walk out of the church to play for some ungodly band and have no regards for the church. You know the worst part? They want to have the better of both worlds, but they want to play in the rock band and play in the church. Play in the rock band, play in the church. I don't know if you allow that in your church, but there has to be a line of demarcation where we draw it's for God I live, and for God I die. And if God chooses to bring me this far, you're going to see me through. So get back to verse 3. Cast him into the bottomless pit. Shut him up. Shut him up. It's finally going to be a time when the devil shut up. Hallelujah. He wants to say something. And it's like every now and then you have to put him in this position. No? Just shut him up. You know, you sit down and the devil come with a thought to your mind. Just shut up. Devil. Hallelujah. My God, put a thought in your mind. Or he comes with somebody to, 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 to bring some broker spoke or story to you. Say, shut up, devil. Amen. Shut up the devil by telling him to shut up. And you have to practice a little like that every now and then. But sometimes you, you, you think that the devil don't speak through other people. But Jesus himself at the one time look at the anointed people and say, the man who just said, Thou art the Christ, have the revelation of his messiahship. And in the next few lines, he was saying, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Not Peter, but the devil that was speaking through him. So, so what is the purpose of this thousand years? Well, let's look at verse four. And I saw thrones, they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded 
So let's go before we go to the souls of them that were beheaded. We see that there are thrones that are set up in this atmosphere. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, um, verse 1 and 2, I think it says, Know ye not that the saints shall judge the world. And if we're going to be judges of angels, we're going to judge angels. Why is it then that we cannot settle a small matter between ourselves? Ella, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Just read First Corinthians chapter 6, 7. I think it's 1 and 2. Because um, we want to understand that there are thrones set here. Mm -hmm. And there are some judgments that are being done. Um, go ahead. So Paul writing to the church in Corinth, there in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, dare any of you having a matter against another, go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall we judge by you and if the world shall be judged by you are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter know ye not that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life angel that is that that is what is god is invested in us when we get saved that that power that we will have to not just be Christian speaking in tongues, but we will be given the responsibility to judge angels. So let us go ahead now to see some of the things that will be happening during this period of um, this period of the millennium. So we said the millennium is how long? One thousand years. Who will be there? Well, we see in Revelation chapter 19 that there are some people that come back um, with white horses as they come with Christ on white horses. And we will see in the next verse that there are going to be some people that came out of the tribulation who did not take the mark of the beast, who will also be in this arena of people that is mentioned here. So let's look at some of the things that we said was going to happen. Do you know that during this time that there will be such peace on the earth? And you know why the peace will be there? Two reasons. One, the Prince of Peace will be sitting on David's throne. And two, the devil, the tempter, will have been bound for a thousand years. My device is giving a pain game to me. They'll be bound for a thousand years. And so that will ultimately speak to a time of peace. No wars will be fought during this thousand years. The Bible says in Isaiah that the lamb and the child shall sit together. And as soon as my device Cooperate with me. I'll give you this particular scripture in Isaiah. But the lamb and the child will sit together, and the, the child will play with a cobra, that dangerous animal, and it will be of such that they will be living peaceably. And this time, which Daniel also prophesied about, there will be just people living. A child being a hundred will still be a child. So people will be living longer. People will be living longer. So where does this thousand year, where do you substantiate this thousand year story from, Ella? We can go, we can go to Daniel. Um, in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, I'm reading a few verses down. We see where this is mentioned um, in Nebuchadnezzar's dream of that great image. Verse 44. And in the days of this king shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. 
and the kingdom shall not be left to another people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all the kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou, I'm in Daniel chapter 2, verse 45, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hand, and that it break in pieces the iron and the brass, the clay and the silver and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass, and we see this revelation hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof. So Daniel saw it in both the image that he had in his dream and the image that Nebuchadnezzar had in his dream. The stone that was cut out of the mountain, it smashed the image. It didn't smash the head, because the head would have been destroyed. But it smashed the image at its feet, where that feet rep represented 10 toes, 10 toes. And in that feet, there's a mixture, um, iron and clay mixed together. And that iron and clay is not a very good alloy. And so you know how weak it is. But to say this, that the beast that is coming will have all the characteristics. This beast of this 10 nation confederacy will have all the characteristics of all four world power before it. But the great God of heaven will have a stone cut out of the mount of God and will smash the image at its feet and destroy it ultimately. The Bible says in Daniel that it shall, it shall roll it until it becomes dust. And then the kingdom of God will be established. So this kingdom that we're talking about here is this millennial kingdom of a thousand years. Why? Why does Jesus have to come? and sit on a throne in Jerusalem. Now, if you look at the Davidic covenant, Ella, in the Davidic covenant, God promised that there would not fail to be a man that sit on the throne of David. And so the, the man that will ultimately sit on the throne of David is the son of David, the son of God, Jesus himself. So Jeremiah talks about it in Jeremiah 33, verse 21. Then may, also, then may also my covenant be brought with David, my servant, that it should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and the Levites and the priests, my minister. There was this promise, and God was not about to break his promise of having someone to sit on the throne of David. If we go to, to um, Daniel chapter 7, we will see also in verse 40. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nation, language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom shall not be destroyed. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 3. Thus said the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and Jerusalem shall be called city of truth and the mount of the Lord of hosts, the holy mount. What we're seeing is that there will be a literal establishment of a kingdom, God's kingdom on earth, which will mark at the end of the battle of Armageddon. The times of the Gentiles will end when this kingdom is established, where God is going to stop dealing with this rule of the Jews by the Gentile powers and will set up his millennial kingdom. In this millennial kingdom, I said, brethren, it will be one of peace. It will be one in which there was the lasting, lasting no temptation. That's the word I want to say. It will be lasting no temptation. Nothing to tempt. We'll go back to, 
to the, the time in the Garden of Eden where the Bible says that there was nothing but the devil, the devil. And before the devil came, it was a peace and paradise. But them that overcome have a special place in this kingdom. Remember we read in Revelation chapter 6 where there were some souls that were under the altar that were crying and saying, Lord, when will it be? Well, the good news is they were promised that they will have to wait until the souls of their brethren be sealed. And, and here in Revelation chapter 20, and it takes us to the next verse, Ella. Revelation chapter 20 is the verse 4. Revelation, and I saw a throne, and them that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or in their hand, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. These are the tribulation saints. And that is why we have been emphasizing to say, when you see the word saint, don't get confused. It don't necessarily mean the church. You have the Old Testament saints. You have the church or the New Testament saints. But you also have the tribulation saints. So these are the tribulation saints that are now going to be given a place in this seat of rule, of God's rule on the earth for a thousand years. And I don't want to reach the other dead yet, but, but when they are resurrected, they are given throne. And you and I have been sealed with throne because we are going to judge angels. So in this millennial kingdom, life will continue. And we who are with Christ will be given seats, positions, rule, because it's the kingdom of God that has come to earth. In Zechariah chapter 12, we see where as he sets himself in the temple, he requires that all nations should come up to worship. All nations should come up to worship. And it was of such that the nations that did not go up to worship, the Bible says he caused rain to cease in those nations. So a lot of activities, life on earth, as we might know it now, but it will be in a different realm and a different requirement, a different setting. But in this thousand year, we are going to have thrones, we're going to have seats, and we're going to have those that will have positions of authority that God has given for those who are part of his kingdom. So. What happened to those nations that will not come to worship? But all nations will be called to come to Jerusalem. One scripture said, 10 people shall be holding on to what you want to say. Take me to Jerusalem. Because I hear that's where, that's where the real thing is happening. That's where God is. And where God is, there is, somebody said, there will be heaven there. Can you imagine being in that place? I was in here, no devil to tempt you. I guess some people would be miserable because they want temptation so badly that if they can't find a devil, they'd be bored. They would be bored. No other God will exist during this time. No other power will exist. But in Zechariah chapter 14, 16 to 18, we read, it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which come up against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of the tabernacle. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no rain. As simple as that. 
God is going to withhold rain from nations that refuse to send representatives to be a part of the worship of God in Jerusalem. And you know when you don't have rain, what's come for the next? Drought. You have drought, but go for the next. Amen. So just regard that during this time, there are some nations that will not have rain and there will be this disaster of not having rain and not having crop. So life continues. Let's get to that scripture with, with the child and the bear. Isaiah chapter 11, 6 to 9. Isaiah chapter 11, 6 to 9. And the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the young lion and the fat lion together. Amen. The lion shall eat straw or grass like the ox. The nursing child shall play with the cobra's hole. And the wind child shall put his hand in the viper's death. And they shall not hurt or destroy all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Here we see, brethren, that even in this time, there will be such a calm, not, not even the, the instinct of these wild animals to earth will be there. It will be taken, and man will be able to live hundreds of years. The man being a hundred, the child being a hundred years will still be a child. Go to Isaiah 65, 19 to 23. Isaiah 65, 19, Isaiah 65, um, <clears throat> 19, 19. And I will set a sign, 65, sorry, 65, I was looking at 66. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. Weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that had not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a curse. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. And they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the day of a tree are, for as the day of a tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the blessed of the Lord, and their right, offspring, offspring shall be with them. So, so we're seeing this is a setting. Of this millennial kingdom. There are some people who. Oh, who, right. Ever, who, Ella, if yes. you continue reading, kind of give a little bit more. It says, uh, go ahead. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The last verse The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. The dust shall be the serpent meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy. In all my holy mountain, said the Lord. <clears throat> right. So that is a picture, a synopsis of what was happening during this millennial reign. And that's because Jesus will be sitting and reigning from his kingdom in Jerusalem as he had promised his servant David that he was going to sit on the throne and bring theocratic government to the rule of the world. And this setting is the picture of a thousand years. Well, somebody said a thousand years like a day um, when it is past, or a thousand years in large size is a day. We don't know how long a thousand years would be, but we know it will be a thousand years. 
<laughs> but there are those here in which God will bring righteous judgment to the earth and prepare the earth for the new heaven and the new earth. Let's get back to the Bible. Back to the Bible. Come on, W. We'll be talking to Ellen. Get to the Bible. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 20. So we have the thousand year, as we said, was mentioned six times. That means it's important to note that during this thousand year, um, verse four, five, the rest of the dead did not come back to life until a thousand years were complete. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who have shared in the first resurrection. Second death has no power over them. But they will be priests of God and Christ and will reign with him a thousand years. So those who are resurrected at, at the, not just the trumpet now, but at the call the millennial call, those that are resurrected at that call will be a part of the first resurrection. The first part of that resurrection will be those that are in the rapture. And this is the second part, those that are coming out of the tribulation, having their robes white, washing the blood of the Lamb, and are resurrected. And they have been given seat of power and authority, and they are going to be ruling and reigning with Christ for a thousand years. But there are some dead that are going to remain dead even during this thousand years. Let's go to verse 7. When the thousand years are complete, my God, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to assemble them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the seashore. And they march across the borders, expanse of the earth, and surround the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire come down from heaven, consume them, and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, into which the beast and the false prophet are uh, hello one thousand year after they went there they still are is that what your bible said still are there <laughs> they are still there did, did your bible say are mm -hmm. or, or, or were mm -hmm. i know you have another version but let's go to king james king james king james say are and New International Version say those that were thrown there before. Right. So King James, I have King James here. Right? Come on, King James. Talk to me. Where the beast and the false prophet are, King James says. Mm. Yeah, here comes King James. Yep. So King James says, read it, Ellen. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. Verse 10 of chapter 20. Now, now if you notice here, it speaks again of God and may God. And, um, it means then that there, this battle of God and may God is separate from the battle of Armageddon. In this battle, God is not going to call for no military strength, nor no military force. Neither is he coming from heaven with his saints, but he's going to cause fire to come down and to destroy those nations that after a thousand years of peace, still found in their hearts when the devil was released for a little season, the side with the devil, and God said, oh, yes, that's what, that's it. I'm purging the earth of all of you. And so all those nations that will come after the thousand years to battle again with, with God. So it's God and the devil now. The devil and his host that rise out of the earth in this time after a thousand years of not being deceived. They are now deceived. 
and God's fire is going to come down and destroy them. Gog and Magog. And Ella always will tell you who Gog is and who Magog is. And both of them will be destroyed by fire. So let's take, take it then. The thousand years been ended. The devil been loose for a season and causes havoc and is now finally, they are destroyed. And the Bible makes it clear that the devil is now finally given a home where he will be forever and ever. And there is a doctrine elder of annihilation which says that uh, once you go in the lake of fire, you'll be burned. And that's it. So it's not like you're going to be tormented forever and ever. Well, I don't know. I'm just trying to read the Bible. The Bible says that 1,000 years after the Antichrist and the beast were cast into the lake of fire. The devil is now thrown in that same area. And it says where they are and they are tormented day and night. The lake of fire and brimstone that, is, that was originally reserved for the devil and his angel. And every person, Ella Russell said, have the chance to avoid hell to avoid going to the lake of fire. When you were born, you were born with a chance to be saved. And it is you who choose not to be saved. But it is not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So God's will is for everybody to be saved. But in the mix, God gives everyone a choice, everyone a will. And so on your own volition, you choose to go one way or the other. But for God's perfect will for your life is for you to be saved. What is preventing you from being saved? What is preventing you from giving God full course of your life? When God has been speaking to you, when God has shown you signs and wonders, when God has honored his covenant with you, Yet still you don't yield. Well, there is a lake of fire and brimstone that is reserved for those who are in disobedience to God, who are not willing to follow God. Satan will be your daddy, and he has nothing to give you but hell and destruction. So, having done Satan bound, the final judgment will be the great white throne judgment. And that is verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no more place for them. The heaven and earth is passing away now. Right? Heaven and earth is passing away. But the word of God is standing. But the Bible says, when he comes riding, he is called the word of God. And he says here, that heaven and earth will pass away, but by word. And so heaven and earth is rolling up together as a scroll. But he who is the word stands to judge. Verse 12, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Some people propose that this book, one is the book of life and one is the 66 books. The books were opened, 66 books. They were judged out of those things. I believe it will be a scene where everybody will be given a chance to see the rollback of their life like a videotape and to see the opportunities that you have and to see the chances and to see the errors of your way and to see what led you to a place that God did, did not design for you, but led you to this place of hell and this white throne judgment. It's a white throne because he that sit on it 
sits in righteous judgment. So the Bible says the dead, small and great. So whether it is presidents or prime ministers, or it is peasants, or it is small, small people and big people, or whether it be some children, all of this is, in, is considered here as it speak of the dead, small and great. Stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their words. The sea gave up the dead which were in them. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their words. So what happened if the fish eat them? Fish can't eat their soul. The soul lives forever. Fish eats the body. What if that shoot you? Will your soul die? No. The flesh dies. And when the flesh dies, so some people are critical as to some people they get as a Christian they die with gunshot. They say, mm, something wrong. No, another thing was wrong. God didn't tell us what way we're getting out of here. But he says we have an appointment with them. And if you think you're so special than the apostles that were crucified upside down, nailed to a cross, lit to provide light for the arenas, thrown in dens with wild animals, chasing them and crushing their bones. If you think that is not horrible death, then think of a gunshot that you just feed it one time and you're dead. But I don't, I don't really know because I never been there yet. But I mean, the, the type of death then is not what is important. What is important is where your soul is when you die. So you might have died the most horrible death, but is your soul right with God? Have you made your calling and your election sure? If God is calling, will he call you and say, well done, good and faithful servant? Or will you hear, depart from me, the workers of iniquity? So there are iniquity workers, brethren, professing to be children of God, ministers of God, bishops of God, Prophets of God, iniquity workers, some of them. And God says, I'm going to judge them. I'm going to judge them. Small and great stand before the judgment seat, and they were judged. The sea gave up the dead. Doesn't matter how deep they buried you, how much iron they put on you to sink you. When that time comes, all the dead are going to come back to be judged at this great white throne judgment. Will this be where the saints be judged? No. The saints are judged at what is called the beam of judgment. In this first Corinthians chapter 3, where the beam of judgment speaks to a judgment of rewards. So it is whether you your works will be tried, whether the motive for doing your thing. So you get a crown based on your motive. You get a crown because you were faithful in holding on to get a um, to Christ. You get a crown because you are a pastor or a leader. There are crowns that are reserved for that. So that judgment, the demon judgment, will be a judgment of reward. And but that is in 2 Corinthians 5.10, right? 5, sorry. 2 Corinthians 5.10. And that demon judgment is where that will happen. But this white throne judgment is the judgment of those that were not in the first resurrection. Of such, the second death has power over them. So remember I said that there was um, physical death, spiritual death, and eternal death. This is eternal death, which is the second death, because you will be eternally in that state of separation from God. Amen? That's state of separation from God. In the spiritual death, you're separated. Your spirit is separated from the Holy Spirit. 
in the natural death, your body is separated from your spirit. And in this spiritual, this eternal death, you'll be eternally separated from the presence of God. So let's finish chapter one and then um, ease into what will happen tomorrow. Uh, what verse are we at? I saw the dead small and great. So we're at verse 30. Verse 30. See, gave up the dead that were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the grave which were in them. Hell. So some people are still in hell, right? After the church rapture, after the tribulation saints were taken out, there were some people in hell. Because hell is that abode, that holding place for those who die outside of Christ. And when I say hell in this sense, I'm talking about the hell part of hell. Because Hades is a word that is used, translated hell. But there is an aspect of hell where um, the torment, and there's an aspect of hell that was moved. Paradise. When Jesus went to the grave, paradise was shifted. You notice when they walked through Jerusalem, they saw the dead, that people that were dead walking, they were on their way to paradise. God shifted them out of hell. And so once paradise moved, Hell's mouth is now enlarged. There's more space. Amen. Amen. There's more space in hell for those of you who don't want to have the glorious, glorious opportunity to be with Christ. And I want one more death, one more thing to be captured here. Verse 40. Death and hell were cast. The last enemy. First Corinthians 15, Ella. The last enemy that shall be destroyed, destroyed. Mm -hmm. is death. <clears throat> the last enemy, that old death. And listen, you see how death is personified here? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Death, that personage of death, that personage of hell, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now, remember, death is really like a person. Because when it comes, it just says, listen, I'm ready for you. It comes, and Bishop S. E. would say, death has no manners. It just walk into a family and just take out somebody. Husband and wife together, and death just walk by and just take, take somebody. Death, that enemy, shall be taken. And the beautiful thing about all of this, is that death and hell will also go down in the lake of fire. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Is your name written in the book? Is your name written in the book? Does heaven know you by name? Does hell know you by name? Is your name written in the Lamb Book of Life? The next chapter actually tells us the beautiful picture that will come in after all of that, which is a new heaven and a new earth. So remember we said at the, at, the, at the seat of the white throne judgment, the heavens and the earth were rolled up as a scroll. And John saw a new city, new Jerusalem, Coming down from God out of heaven, prepare as a bride adorned for her husband. New heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth will pass away, and there was no more sea. So there's going to be a new heaven, brethren. There's going to be a new earth. Somebody says, Who then would be on the new earth? Well, Jesus did tell them that the meek shall in the earth. And believe that the Jews will inherit the earth, that we will be with Christ forever. I'm going to stop here for today, and um, we're going to shoot open for some questions, unless my teacher, Ella Russell, has anything to add. Then we're going to just open up for some questions. All right. Um, just a little bit, Ella Edwards, that you just invoke in my spirit. You always do that. Um, just to set the condition that you have given to us during the, the millennial kingdom, 
one thing that we have to point out with the million millennial kingdom 1000 years rule of christ milli is a thousand and i know meaning years so that's where we get the 1000 years but within the, the the rule of christ after the overthrow of the antichrist god is going to set up his kingdom no we read within the the uh, within the scripture the conditions of the of the 1000 years of christ what a wonderful it's, it's almost like and i said almost selectively almost like heaven on earth because sin will still be abounding even during the great um the, the millennial reign of christ um it is it is a wonderful study when you dig deep into it because it involves all of us coming to rule in the administration of God here on earth. And this is where the scripture is fulfilled. The meek shall inherit the earth. So the church is going to come back and rule on, on earth in Jerusalem, being the capital for a thousand years. Sin will still be there. Sin will not be demolished. Sin will not be uh, abolished, I should say. Sin would be around. How do we know that? Ella Edwards read the scripture from Zechariah chapter 12 that the nations uh, don't want to come up and worship. So God said, okay, no drought, no rain is going to fall in your part of the world. So it forced them to come up and give worship. So there will be still that underbelly of rebelliousness that will still be within the reign of Jesus Christ. But you have to do what God says because he will be ruling, the scripture said, with a rod of iron. And this is why, this is where now the, the devil come. And that's why when I think Ella Edwards read the scripture where um, the devil was loose for a little season to deceive those nations. Now, anyway, you say nations, we're not talking about necessarily about the Jewish people. So we, we, we understand here that there will be nations other than the Jews will be on earth when he is ruling. Okay. All right. So if people think that, oh, the great tribulation, there will be nations on the earth outside of the Jewish people that will be, that come through the great tribulation. Children will be born during the, during the great um, reign of Christ, the 1,000 years of Christ. You know, life will go on. How that life look like? We kind of see a little bit of that. We even see a change in the animal. The, the, the lion is going to eat, you know, is going to eat straw like the ox. You know, there will be, you know what? You have carnivores, and then you have what again? You have what herbivores or something like that. So we see where the, 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 there's a change within the animal. Where we see where God herbivorous, herbivorous. Yes, where do we see God is slowly shifting back to what He created back in the beginning in Genesis chapter three when we talk about paradise. Um, you know, Adam and Eve. We see where that is where God is shifting back to to that order where the animals are not carnivores you know i mean they are herbivores you know we'll be eating well Ella will talk to you about that when we go into the new heaven and the new earth but we see where the, the shifting is happening during the reign of christ where god is going back to its or to its to its back to its original creation and so we see the change in the animal kingdom and but we don't see a hundred percent change in the human heart, but we see a change also within um, how long we live, you know, and death that will still abound in the, I, I know some people challenge me on that one time when, when we say that, you know, yeah, people will be, you know, people will born in during the millennial period, people will die in the millennial period because they shall not be a child, you know, no, there shall be no child um, having a stillborn, you know, like now we have a stillborn child and a child dying ch in, in, in childbirth. None of that will happen to a child. You know, when you are pregnant and you have your baby, your baby is going to be healthy and it's going to live a hundred, you know, over a hundred years old. Um, and everybody's going to, so when anybody died during the millennium, we understand that they just live out their days. That's according to you know, the nation according to the flesh. So there's going to be this, this tranquility, this peace, this joy on earth because Jesus Christ is ruling. But you're going to still have that um, mindset of people 
during the millennial period that will be looking to rebel against God. And we see that when the devil was loose for a little season. And that's where the, the other battle comes in now. So we have the battle of Armageddon. And now we have this other battle with Gog and Mega coming against Christ. The devil just can't, the devil just don't get it that he has lost the battle. And that's where now, you know, we are. So the men in the reign of Christ is going to involve all of us. And we are going to be a part of the reign. Amen. Praise God. We are going to be a part of God's administration. We'll be judging the world will be judging angels it's going to be a glorious time with the lord and that is why we have to make our calling and election sure so ella edwards has done an excellent job so that's all i have to add ella thank you miss moderator your time Oh, let me be lost for eternity. Well, thank you, Lord Jesus. For above all else, I, I must not be saved. For above all else, I must be saved. For whatever you have. To me, don't let me be lost or turn up to you about all else. I must be saved. Hallelujah, mighty God. Come and we may just thank God and glorify God for the word. Mighty God, once upon a horse, white horse is written the word. Come on, come in the room and Glorifying for the word this morning. Thank you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, mighty God. Hallelujah. What a blessed morning. What a glorious morning, an anointed morning. Holy Ghost is on this line, mighty God. Amen. We're going to a time of questions. Amen. Hallelujah. Tomorrow morning we're having more questions. Amen. It's going to be more of questions, but if you won't be on tomorrow, you know, some people might have to go to work early or something. They can't be on every morning. So we're going to ask those other questions to come in the room. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask Lady Marshall, could you lead this section for us? And then we'll those people that need to ask the questions at this time. Amen. Pertaining to the teaching yesterday morning and to this morning, mighty God. Or if if there's something that I'm just going to do, you know, if, if, if there's something in the Bible that you have read and you keep sinning because you don't understand the, the, the meaning of it, or, or to stop doing it, or how to understand the word, not to do, to do what the word say, could say something pertaining to that to the rapture mighty god you, you keep doing this thing you know you you know you know you're not supposed to do it you don't understand what god is saying the word and you you're not in the place to say for the rapture you can ask a question also so they can explain how to stop doing it and what the word is saying you need to do do what the word say so go ahead and ask a question this morning jesus name over to you lady marshall 
Alright, Mr. Morton, are you on? Okay, Sister Sharon. Go ahead, Sister Sharon, ask the question. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Yes, That's Elder. Um, I don't know if I get it twisted, but let me ask you. Um, you were talking about peace and tranquility during the mill millennium and the earth. Mm -hmm. Is it gonna be before the rapture or after the rapture? Well, the millennium, the millennium, the one thousand year. Let me just say the one thousand year of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if it's going to be before or after the rapture, that's what you're asking? Yes, sir. Okay. Ella Edwards, you can just answer that for her, please. Oh, Ella Edwards, since when he unmute. If you unmute yourself, Ella. Okay. All right. So, All right, so go ahead. Ella. Sequence of event then is we have the um, rapture, then we have the seven year the Daniel last week, which will be the tribulation period. And at the end of the tribulation, you have the battle of Armageddon. At the end okay. of the battle of Armageddon is mm -hmm. the millennial rule, the 1,000 year of peace. So that's where it is, long after the rapture. Oh, uh, and again, um. You were talking about um, the unfair judge. Why, like we Christian, go to court? I am thinking the same thing too, because in some churches, like the Jehovah Witness, um, they try their own case. And then we, the Pentecostal, would take our brother or sister um, to court. So I would say they are following the law, even though we say they are not right so why are we right and going the other way i can answer that um now remember there are cases that you need to take action and it will require even going to the court paul says you have option you can suffer yourself to suffer loss or you can go for if you can't be settled at a local level there's no one in the church that can administer over a case, say it's a land transfer. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody in the church that can administer over that. Then you have to go to the court to have it dealt with. There are some issues you have to go to the court. If you're getting married, you can't marry in the church, but you still have to go to the court uh, to get a, a permit from the court in order to get married. So there are things that can be settled at the local level, that should be settled at the local level, even to the extent where sometimes you have to suffer loss. Paul says that we should try to settle it among ourselves rather than having to take it to the court to bring an embarrassment upon the church. It's yeah. like when church taking church to court. Yes. You know? oh. Church yeah. taking church to court. It can't be settled outside of the unjust society seeing us washing our dirt living. You know, pastor sweet pastor. I remember suing the church because they, they injured while they were dancing and they're suing the church for that. And we settled that inside. So there are things that the law requires that you have to do it with the law, the court of our law. But there are matters that can be settled among us. And the first option is to get it settled. Now, let me throw this in. Some people will um, say sell your property yeah. and they sold it with a lien on it. By that, that means they knew they owe 100000 on it and they sell it the property. Now you're going to lose that property. You can just make it slide or you no. can try to take it to the court to have some reinstatement from the person who did you that. Now is that a child of God that did that? I don't know because the Bible says there are some wicked people in church, especially mm -hmm. those who borrow, borrow and pay, not a debt. You know, so the person was asked, why did you take your brother into the court? He said, I didn't take my brother, and I take the wicked. Can they borrow and don't pay again? And the Bible said the wicked borrowed and paid not again. So as I said, there are issues that can be resolved at local level, 
and it should be and those issues that you can forbear, you know, take the loss. You should, rather than your first option being to take it to the unjust judge. Hello? Okay, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, God bless you, um, Althea. Althea? On your screen. Uh, are you yes, okay. yes Go ahead, this is uh, yes, um um prophecy Morton. I wanted to speak to you personal. So how oh, could I get okay, okay, Miss Althea? Yeah. Tomorrow morning, if you're on the line, I'll make an announcement as the host. You can talk to the guest, okay? At what time tomorrow morning? Uh, we'll set, I'll be sending out a number where you can make an appointment. Oh, okay. Okay, yes. I'm, I'm grateful of that. Okay. Yes, yes. That's... Okay. Mr. Samantha Green, it's on your screen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, elders, and all the same. Um, elder, as it relates to the, the millennial reign, that 1,000 year period, um, I know I always thought that during that period we would have complete peace, and um, I realized that there, it was highlighted that there would be some amount of disobedience. Um, then I'm trying to figure then that during this period where we're having some amount of disobedience, does it mean that these people will not necessarily move on to the um, eternal life in heaven? Or is it that once you have made it to the millennial reign, then automatically everyone there would have qualified to just be with Christ forever in heaven? No, because remember now, right after... The thousand year, the devil is going to be loose for a season. And anybody who aligns with him, uh, including those nations that are disobedient, they will be destroyed. They will be destroyed and not be a part of the new heaven and the new earth. So, Elder, 